Everybody grab a tea, grab a coffee. Everybody ready? Just get a few more seconds for everyone to join. So we're gonna get started here. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Telmo Silva uh, from QuickData. I am the CEO and CTO of QuickData. Along with, uh, with myself, I have Sri Neve as a co-presenter. Uh, he'll be moderating the questions. Um, you can ask the questions at any point in time. So welcome to our webinar, September 20th, 2018. Um, again, my name is Telmo and I will be presenting to you a very quick overview of QuickData. For those of you that don't know what click data does or is uh, and then we will be talking about a very specific topic called uh, white labeling and uh, in in the summary it's how you can basically change click data to uh, to blend in a little bit better with your corporate identity uh, your other applications and so forth so first things first i hope everybody can hear me if not do please um, raise your hand there or uh, ask a question on the moderated chat Q&A. Um, these webinars are focused webinars. I try not to bore you. Uh, we typically pick a topic and we try to give, you know, a lot of information just about that topic, whether it's a business scenario or whether it's a, a set of functionalities around uh, click data. We always end as well with a small preview of some of the new features coming up either in the weeks to come or in the month to come. Um, as a reminder, we update the application every two weeks with new features. So there's always uh, something new to, to demonstrate and to show. Uh, our webinars are recorded and will be available after this uh, within a couple of hours uh, after this webinar uh, is as ended. And you can access that at clickdata.com support slash webinar. If you have any ideas or suggestions for future webinars, please do uh, email me at telmo.silva.clickdata.com. Really appreciate anything that uh, you offer in terms of uh, what would you like to see here uh, that would fit within a 30 uh, to 40 minute um, webinar. So very quickly, just a quick word about click data. Uh, we uh, are basically uh, our BI uh, platform, a BI business intelligence platform. We believe that current tools today are very heavy for most businesses they are very complex and they're very expensive. Uh, we think that we can do better. Uh, we have thought so for the last uh, three years since we've gone uh, live. We've worked on the application for a long time before that uh, with a lot of uh, uh, corporate and, and small and medium sized businesses. And we believe that click data uh, can fulfill a lot of the needs for a lot of companies. We currently have over 17,000 free and paying customers. Our free model has actually just ended a few months ago. Um, so we are continuing with a trial uh, trial basis. If you like what you see, we uh, you know you can then uh, subscribe to a paying model. Um, just some numbers. Uh, these keep changing uh, and increasing every month. Uh, but we publish over 45,000 dashboards every single day. Uh, we're being used in over 47 countries in all major continents, from Australia to Canada, um, a lot of countries in Europe as well. And uh, again, uh, the reason why we built ClickData is because we do want to simplify how we uh, address the problem of gathering data and reporting on this data. And uh, copying and pasting in Excel is not the answer. So we always talk about the four C's where we connect to different data sources, we combine those data sources, create dashboards, and we uh, publish them automatically or allow people to um, access them via uh, what we call live links or embedded on your websites and portals or even emailed uh, directly to you or via the mobile app. So on the connection front, uh, we con consider that building a data warehouse is, is the biggest issue uh, most businesses have, especially in this day and age where you have a lot of cloud sources 
um, there's a hybrid in, in many companies, small and large, where you have some Excels locally and you have CRM systems on the cloud. And potentially you still have some legacy systems as well kicking around. So that problem is, is not going to go away anytime soon. People and companies pick applications best of breed. Um, so it is natural that you will have uh, always a hybrid environment uh, when it comes to, to storing your company data, be that financial data or uh, customer relationship or sales marketing data, um, e-commerce, uh, logistics, etc. So again, the concept of building a data warehouse, one way or another, is still very much alive. And it facilitates the fact that if you have all your data in one spot using the same technology, it should be easier to build dashboards. So what do we consider a dashboard? A lot of people um, talk about reports and dashboards. We figured uh, we focus on, on placing uh, key performance metrics in a very simplified uh, confined space, so one page. Um, Currently today, we don't uh, adhere to this concept of just showing pages and pages of, of rows of data, as you would see in, in old school reports on your mainframes. Uh, we focus on presenting some key performance metrics that you can then uh, drill down and, and kind of display another dashboard that then uh, twists things around to kind of show you a different facet of, of that, of, of that uh, performance indicator. And that type of guided analysis helps uh, users that do not have the, the, the skills, technical or otherwise, to, to actually understand some of these metrics and uh, go out and get them to actually uh, navigate easily and be able to, to understand what's happening with their business. Quick word on data security. Because we do bring all this data uh, you know, in-house, let's call it, is centralized and click data, um, you know, we, we obviously don't, don't run this on, on small servers. We partner with Microsoft. Um, and we currently host data in three major data centers, both in US and Europe. Uh, we have uh, new data centers coming up soon in both Australia and Canada, uh, as well as in France, which will be our third data center in Europe, in fact. Uh, we obviously keeping our data safe and and uh, and premise and segregated from the other data sets is our key uh, most important uh, job along with keeping the application performing as as much as possible um, our key advantages overall and you know in to, to if you compare us with different tools out there that exist today uh, ranging for anywhere from excel and tableaus to all the way to large-scale mainframe you know or data warehouses uh, on Oracle is the speed at which you can accomplish things within click data. Um, you can connect to over 200 data sources very quickly. You can store all this data. You, you don't have to buy databases. You don't have to buy licenses. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You can start visualizing and publishing all this and automating this on a regular basis to all your users uh, within the first day of actually getting, getting into the system. So it's that speed that's important because uh, dashboards and reporting is not a static thing. It keeps uh, changing and it cannot, this cycle cannot take weeks or months to accomplish. You will need to revisit these dashboards. You will need to make changes, market changes, your work changes, your, your company, your products change, your customers change. So it's, you cannot wait weeks and months for this to happen. Uh, if you if you uh, upgrade your systems or if you switch from one CRM system to another, with our system the dashboard still work. With the other uh, competitors, uh, unfortunately, you will have to recreate uh, to the new system. You'll have to reconnect and rebuild those dashboards. They're very uh, directly linked to the data sources. Uh, the integration into your own portal, what we're going to talk about today, how you can integrate uh, to a certain sense, how can you integrate some of these dashboards or make it look like click data is yours as opposed to a third party application. And also, obviously, we are very centric, uh, uh, culturally centric. Uh, we, we serve both North America, uh, Latin America, uh, Australia, uh, Australia, Europe uh, customers. So obviously making the system uh, culturally aware, both from a language perspective, but also in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of different uh, formatting, uh, currencies, et cetera, that, that the system is ready for. And obviously our accessible pricing. 
uh, which is typically thousands less than, than most of uh, the other competitors. So with that, I will end my little pitch on, on, on click data, which is my passion, and I will continue on to this uh, webinar topics, which is white labeling. And what does that mean? Um, white labeling talks about a lot of uh, how you can customize the application. Now, we're not going to talk about full strength integration into a third party application. That depends a lot on what that third party application is. Uh, hopefully, if, you, if you've been to our website, you know that we have something called the Live Link. And Live Link is a way to integrate our dashboards in any web style of application. So that we've discussed in another webinar, and probably that topic will come again in future web webinars. But today we're talking about how you can customize and really tailor some of the, the logos and colors and, and make it seem like the, the application is yours, even if you do not integrate those dashboards into a third-party application. So why would you want to white label? Um, well, you may want to white, white label this because you wish to uh, promote your performance indicator, or, uh, your metrics, the work you've been doing with Click Data internally by making it your own. There's a lot more acceptance from everybody in, in typically uh, when you're trying to implement a new concept, whether that is a new process or a new way uh, or a, a new tool. Um, if you make it yours, if you brand it, uh, with your company, you will definitely have a better intake because people will feel attached to it. And we all know that implementing BI is is a hurdle. It's it's sometimes very difficult to to get everybody to be looking at the same metrics and agree uh, and 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 start changing their habits to be data centric centric and data focused. Uh, so anything that you can do to help that bridge that um, is going to increase your chances of successfully implementing a BI or a data centric uh, view in, in your company. Sometimes you do need white label pure and simply because you just don't want the customers to know that this is click data that's actually uh, providing them with the dashboards or that allows them to edit their own dashboards. Um, it creates this co coherent company vision and identity as we talked before. And by the way, it's fun. You can play around with colors, you can put different logos and you know it's, it makes it a, a lot more interesting for some of the users. Now, there may be other reasons why you uh, want to white label. These are just some of the ones that some of the current customers that have asked for it. Um, and the reason why we've implemented white label is because really uh, people wanted this, this feature. So what can we do in click data? Um, well, the first thing we can do is obviously remove, remove click data from everywhere. Uh, that's the obvious one. When we first introduced click data, uh, over four years ago in, in beta, we, we had click data all over. We were very proud of the application, but we felt that um, we don't need to be proud of the name just sitting on the screen. We can be proud of the application if people just use it and they put their own name on it. We are actually even more proud of that. So one of the things we, we did is we went through the whole application anywhere we have click data. And if we enable this option for, you, for your account, um, then click data will disappear from everywhere, except for the owner. The owner of the account will always see some click data kicking around because uh, we need to send some stuff, uh, you know, things such as, um, you know, any, any security, uh, any sharing uh, emails, etc., will come from and branded with click data so that the owner of the account will know that this is a system generated email, for example, okay? Or accessing the, uh, the help support. Obviously that's click data. We also don't rebrand the help facility online to click uh, to your own. The help facility is a public facility that everybody can have access to. But within the application from the login screen all the way back to the logout, click data is gone if you have this option accessible in your account. You could also change the login page background. You can change the application domain name and the title at the top and the logo itself. You can change the live links. So you will not only show the domain, so yourcompany.com slash, uh, you know, my sales dashboard, you could actually name that. You can remove the top bar 
or you can brand it with your own logo. And even all the emails sent to your users will have your logo, your company name, and even your email address or the email address of, of an account that you choose to use as the sender. So basically what we want to do is really, uh, if your user logs in, they feel like they're logging into your application, not ours. Now, there are some things we cannot change. Obviously, some of the, uh, uh, some of the icons and, and colors and, and the way the buttons are and what they say, uh, there is a lot of options. So uh, obviously, we cannot change everything. But you know, let me show you some of the ways we can. So the easiest one to start off with is just the name and logo, okay? And I'm just going to switch quickly here to, to uh, I believe it's this one here. I'm just going to log into my account. So one of the things you'll see here right at the top is, is this name and logo. You can choose via your account settings. And again, I'm the administrator and owner of this account, but this is a feature that the administrators only and the owners have access to. So in here, you can actually change basically the name, what you see at the top and the logo. You can put your own logo or you can pick from one of the logos uh, that we have here. Uh, any of these logos, uh, you can use uh, ready-made with a different color. Or again, you can just pick, you know, a, an email that you, uh, an image that you have. Okay. The second option at the bottom is whether you display the logo, only the logo, or display the name, or both. In my case, I have actually both enabled. Okay. And this is the the very first steps to actually uh, configure. Once they log in, what do they see at the top there? Because if you don't need to set up uh, set this up, or if you don't have white label. Up at the top, you will see Click Data's logo with a Click Data brand name. The second piece is what we actually call white label uh, in the account settings. Now, this one here um, basically hides the Click Data branding. So, if you have this option and you turn it on, Click Data will disappear from pretty much everywhere. And you can also pick a default background. Uh, for your login screen. So I'm just going to go head over there right now. And if I hide the click data branding, um, nowhere will you see click data, even on links on login, etc. Okay. And again, you can pick different colors for your background. You can also pick uh, from a selection of, of background images that we have, of very high quality and high resolution images. Or you can, like I said, just pick a solid color to uh, for your login screen to match potentially your, your corporate identity. Okay, so this again just uh, starting very very slowly how you can create an experience for the user immediately upon login and once they reach the main menu um, that is truly you know already uh, catered to your company's uh, styling. So a lot of people ask about what about the mobile. Well, the mobile, as some of you may have already known, or if you if you've been recently to our release notes, we've uh, recently released a new version of the mobile apps, both for the Android, as well as for the uh, iPhone and the iPad. Those are three applications mobile that we uh, that we keep up regularly. Um, unfortunately, with the mobile applications, though, we can't. Um, fully white label, meaning uh, for us to white label everything, we would have to go to the App Store of Apple and create an application for each one of our customers. We can do that, but we did the next best thing as much as possible. The application is still click data, um, and I'll show you the web pages, uh, how they look after. But I've changed the logo, uh, so no longer will you see the click data logo um, uh, you know, on the login screen. So right here, uh, you will see on the mobile app, a generic dashboards logo. And the application uh, title, not the application name, is actually called dashboard. So when it starts up, you'll see this logo with the word dashboards underneath, okay? And more on this later as well, because, uh, you know, there was some news around the mobile piece that I'd like to also share in the future, in the future releases. But once you've logged in, uh, we can then white label things. So here you have a case where it's not white labeled. 
and on the right uh, there's my company logo and my company name again once again um, enabled uh, so it feels again that you know you'll know that it, you're inside your account so this is the extent but again just, just a word of warning if you look for our application on the Google Play Store or if you look at it on the, the app, Apple uh, App Store uh, you will still find it under click data uh, those those uh, partners will not let us uh, you know completely hide the fact that it's our application obviously for security reasons and for clarity reasons as well and obviously we cannot keep um, publishing new apps, they would not allow us to publish the same app repeatedly for different customers, okay? Um, and again, we want to make this very easy to install and widely available, that's why we're, we're, we're choosing this mechanism of distribution going through the app stores. Since we're still talking just about the login and the interface, we have the user customization piece now, um, we felt the user customization very quickly is left up to each user to go to the My Settings and actually pick under Preferences, the second tab here, and then Application Theme. And here you have two things you can pick. You can pick your background, so you can change it, um, or you can pick as well the, the color theme uh, of the menus across the whole application. Now changing this um, is on a per user basis, okay? And we we left it this way for a variety of reasons. Um, the main one that was concerning to us was that we spent a lot of time trying to decide some color combinations on some of the interface uh, so that it is easy for uh, people with disabilities uh, in terms of contrast, etc. So we wanted to make sure that even though there's a corporate standard of saying, you know, the menu should be in light gray and the menu is in white, that that would be terribly difficult for you to see. So we always wanted to try to keep uh, the user as the, the person that controls that. Um, as well as the background in, in, in certain extents, where it can be very confusing to have an image in the background, even if it's, uh, you know, your nice company logo, uh, that it could conflict with, you know, the interface of the application, etc. However, we are looking into also standardizing that at the company level and allowing you to force the background to be a certain, of a certain type. So that is coming in, in, in the future release. But again, in terms of the colors of the menus, uh, we'll probably still leave this up for the user to, to make sure that, you know, the, they pick the best, um, uh, the best color scheme possible for, uh, for them. Okay. That, in a sense, ends kind of the interface people, uh, part of, of, of the, of the customization of white labeling. Because if you think about it, there's everything else is about dashboards. And dashboards, it's up to you to design them. So uh, you can then pick whatever you want the dashboards to look like for your users. So there's not a whole lot left in the application other than the colors of these menus and then the login screen. Um, uh, really the rest is really all up to you with the dashboard design. But there's still something that if you've noticed up at the top here, uh, it's you still see clickdata.com. And and if you receive an email, you'll probably still uh, the email will still come from click data. So the next two topics is about how you can modify that to make this your own. OK, and unfortunately, um, you know, it sometimes it gets a little bit more technical than it should. Um, but that's the Internet these days. Everybody's talking about security. So one of the things that uh, that you must have is obviously a domain name to start off. Um, you have to get a, your own domain name if you don't have one. Uh, if you do get one, you have also to get what's called an SSL certificate associated with this domain name. So if you want people to access uh, click data under your white label, clear, clear of, of click data's name, then you will need to get something like dashboards.acme.com and get an SSL certificate uh, under that name. What is an SSL certificate? It's basically a way to that all browsers must uh, will use to check that uh, the website that is actually 
giving you information and showing you a web page or a login page is the real one behind that name. In other words, it's, it's checking the certificate to say, okay, you've asked for dashboards.acme.com. Is this really them? Or is somebody else impersonating dashboards.acme.com and potentially putting another login page and pretending it's them so they get your credentials and 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 move from there? So the SSL is very, very important. We're not going to allow anybody to get a white label URL uh, unless they have an SSL certificate name. So and you need to upload the certificate to click data. And once you upload the certificate to click data, uh, you will need to tell the world, basically, you'll need to what's called update your domain name server, which is, for example, GoDaddy uh, is, is a well-known. Uh, there, there's so many out there, but basically, most likely, the, the place where you got your domain name, there is a setting to say, okay, where is this dashboards.acme.com in the world? And you need to point that to click data to say it's it's them. Okay, so that your users, your employees, your partners will type dashboards.acme.com. Um, we will validate, uh, we'll check where that server is and then validate that that server is really us, click data, providing you with, with the dashboards and, and the application. And this process is all done, again, through the My Account menu. Under Account Settings, we will go to Domain. And here, currently, I'm using totalcorp.clickdata.com. That's a click data domain. You can change this and, and click check. But here, if you wish to use a custom domain, you need to follow the steps. And this is a wizard-like step where first you need to add a certificate. So it's going to guide you through a wizard of saying, OK, you need to upload the certificate. We will verify that, that certificate okay, to make sure it's valid and it doesn't expire. And then once that is done, you will need to change your CNAME on your DNS server to point to us and click activate, okay? Now, this is always easier said than done. It gets a little bit technical, but again, our support team is here to help. So if you are looking into doing this, all you have to do is either chat with us online, uh, make sure you have your domain name purchased, um, and uh, make sure you have an SSL certificate purchased alongside with it, which makes things a lot easier. Okay. Um, I'm just looking up here the questions, and uh, I'm just going to answer a couple of them so that we we don't pile up at the end with a lot of questions. But one of the question is, um, if I want to white label for uh, five different corporate uh, customers. Uh, do you need five different master accounts? Well, that that's kind of a great question, and um, it it depends on a few things, as always. Uh, IT is always a it depends um, scenario. Um, it really depends on first of all the data. Um, is the data the same for all five uh, corporate customers, or can you segment it and secure it within Click Data differently? Okay, if you can then you will trust the security of click data to split that data up for each one of your clients and your dashboards therefore will also be pointing to different data sets so using click data security there is no way that one user from one client to another user in another client will see the data or the dashboards of the other client however they will all need to log in through one single system so you cannot white label for each one of those customers. You can white label for yourself, for your company, and saying, okay, I am the company that's providing service to these five, five customers, but uh, I will not be able to white label the interface to each one as each one of them logs in. Remember, the, the login page uh, is only one login page. We will not know what that customer is until they log in. So we cannot uh, preemptively show a logo or a background on the login page um, for each of your customers. Uh, but once they log in, then you can tailor which dashboards they see. And the style of the, of the dashboards will match the customer style. So they will have the same menu colors. They will have the same, <clears throat> excuse me, 
your company name at the top, but once they click on their dashboards, they will have their own logos, their own look and feel, and the UI and colors of each one of those dashboards. I hope that makes sense and, and that answers your question. Now, if you do want to get five separate accounts, so one for each customer, that obviously you can activate white label specific for each customer from the login page all the way to the emails. However, in that case, if your data is centralized, you need to split your data into five accounts separately. Okay, so those are the pros and cons. And again, if, if you're interested in more information, please do set up some time with me online. Uh, you can go to the uh, Click Data Support page and I'll gladly work out the scenarios with you and, and uh, try to, to come up with the best, most cost effective and secure way of, of doing this. Okay. The last piece that I'd like to talk about is um, uh, about the email. Remember that Click Data sends you a lot of emails. Um, it sends emails on your behalf, uh, on the behalf of your company, when a dashboard is published, when there's an alert, when even if the user forgot their password and they click reset password, they will get an email. If the, your account is not white labeled, all those emails will come from Click Data with our logo you probably and they will come from uh, an email address called no reply clickdata.com or something similar to that now you can change that too okay now that process fortunately is easier than the url certificate uh, discussion that we just had but it still involves something called your dns okay your dns again is your domain name server and it's something that you need to trust uh, or you need to, to have your DNS trust click data as a sender of emails on your behalf. Because if, imagine if you didn't have this, uh, you know, this step, anybody could just pretend to send emails on your behalf from, from any server. So one of the things you need to do is contact again your domain name server or if you have an IT department and add three items to your DNS, okay? So your, whoever manages your DNS will know what this is, a C name. It's adding three lines to your DNS server. And once that is done, you can add an email uh, within your email server uh, uh, that uh, ClickData will use to send emails on your behalf, okay? Once your IT administrator adds those three lines, you just click verify to see all the green check marks. If there's green check marks on everything, that means we can now send an email on your behalf. It's much simpler than the certificate and the domain. Okay. So when you get an email, you will see something like your logo. Instead, it will show coming from you know your your email address, and nowhere will you see click data. Okay. Now a quick word about this. Um, there are some regulations coming into place where any email system, including ours, uh, needs to, uh, to have something on the email to clearly identify where that email comes from. Um, if you are forced with those type of regulations, again, love to talk to you again. Uh, I can help you with those and see how we can incorporate the fact that um, as a data processor, and this is specifically for GDPR in Europe and uh, HIPAA compliance in the US, that we can still show that this email is coming from Click Data on your behalf, okay? So that is quite easy to address. Uh, if you're interested in that as well, book some time with me, let's talk, and we can, uh, we can definitely uh, look into that. So again, recapping all these white label options, uh, our idea is really to hide that it's us uh, it's our application and our code working. It's your application. It's your knowledge that has gone into the dashboards and, and, and your uh, work done massaging the data. So it should be your app, your platform, not ours. Um, it's, it's so hard already getting an organization to be focused on on the key metrics via dashboards that you don't want these little things like, oh, this doesn't look like ours. I don't like this. I don't like that. If you make it yours, um, you know, if, if, if you can make it in such a way that you can form habits with, with this by making it fun, adding gamifications or white labeling, all these are different components of how you can make um, something as dull even as, a, as an invoicing system, if you will, or a, 
a, a, a CRM system or a sales control system, you can make it all these more exciting by adding some of these these elements. And this is one of the things we're trying to do is add more uh, uh, more the ability for you to make it your own. Uh, and again, white label is just a small step towards making it easier for you to implement your platform and actually gain to this okay um, I'm gonna just take a look at it in before I go into the new features and this will actually be quick um, but I'm just gonna look into uh, the question here um, so how does click data mask the email address while sharing dashboards to other users actually I just went through that question uh, I hope that answered your your um, that answered your question what I just presented again we stand on half using uh, you know an email address to provide and that uh, you allow us to use that email address through the CNAME uh, portion, okay? Um, another question is, do we need a subdomain or can we use the same domain as a regular website? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, subdomain versus, so in my example here, and I'm just gonna move back so that we, you know, we talk about dashboards.acme.com. So, Typically, most companies would have a domain name already, www.acme.com, uh, and that would go to their, uh, you know, website. Um, obviously, we cannot give the same address to click, say, type www.dashboards, uh, sorry, acme.com, and go both to your website and to uh, click data. So you need to get a subdomain. A subdomain in this case would be dashboards.acme.com. A second uh, uh, it's still the same domain name. It ends with acme.com, but it has now two subdomains, www and uh, dashboards.acme.com. So if you do have a main use or a use for the main uh, domain name, www, then yes, you do need to get a subdomain or you get, uh, in, in most cases, you can get this. Typically, you don't purchase a subdomain. When you go to GoDaddy and all these other name providers, you purchase a domain name. You purchase acme.com, and that will give you access to all the subdomains you want to make. So you can call it www.acme.com, ftp.acme.com, uh, dashboards.acme.com, yourname.acme.com. You can do whatever you want because you purchased a domain name. The domain is yours. The subdomain is a secondary thing. Where that comes into play is on the SSL certificate. When you purchase a, an SSL certificate, and if you remember my example to say, you know, the browser needs to make sure that what you've asked for is who's delivering the information. So if you type dashboards.acme.com, that has to be very precise. The certificate must be in the name of dashboards.acme.com. Otherwise, you need what's called a, a wildcard SSL certificate. Just like your domain name, a wildcard SSL certificate, you can uh, add as many subdomains as you want. So you can secure your website. And by the way, in, in case you have not uh, heard, uh, Google Chrome, for example, will remove support for any websites that are not secured with an SSL certificate. Uh, a lot of the new browser versions uh, will give you extreme errors saying that this site is not secure, etc. even for a simple website. So you will need to get an SSL certificate for your website sooner or later. So if you do get one and you can afford to pay a little bit more to get a wildcard SSL certificate, then you'll be able to uh, cover all your different domains with that one certificate, okay? Oh, that was not too technical, uh, but again, I remain available for anybody that is that is interested in knowing more about about those items. So let me talk to you about some of the things that have been recently released and some of the things that are going to be released soon. The quick widget actions has been our uh, most recent for designer facility. Um, it basically gives you fast access to delete, to duplicate, um, uh, access the properties of a widget. And what we're going to be doing is adding more special actions to, the, to it. So by special actions, what I mean is, um, let me see if I can just create a quick um, uh, dashboard here. And I'm going to throw in a chart. 
that's the toolbar that I'm talking about. This is the new one. You can use it to drag, obviously. You do know that you can drag as well by clicking in on the border. Um, you can access the properties by clicking the little gear icon. By the way, you can also push F2 or click the properties down here or even double click on the border. So many different ways, whatever is more convenient to you. If you wanna make a copy, you just click duplicate and you have one. Um, you can move front, back, forward, etc. cetera, delete it. And for certain widgets, the special actions, this is what I was talking about, is you'll be able to change um, chart types very quickly. So we'll, we're gonna be adding more logic to this over time. So you'll be able to change not only in these four types, but within other types. And even other widgets, you'll, you'll be able to change, for example, a gauge into an indicator uh, and to a horizontal gauge once that is released as well. So uh, that will make it easy for you to try different visualizations very quickly without always having to access properties. I also want to remind you that we will be adding more things on the widget properties. Now this is this is a great tool when you have, you know, again, multiple widgets on your dashboard. And you know, you just want to name them very quickly, or you want to lock position or, or make them hidden or visible or changing the style uh, very quickly without having to always go to the properties each time. OK, um, so this will be adding also more features here so that you can do this uh, work uh, faster and easier. OK, so those those are some of, of the of the things that uh, we've done. We'll have a new input widget released most likely for next week. Uh, this input widget is a radio button. It's a radio button uh, widget, which allows you to select a single option uh, of up to uh, 20 or 30 uh, options that you can have all the way up to. Um, so this is ideal for, for things like a short list of options or you know scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, etc. So very handy. The different styles that you can see here will be available right off the box. Okay. Um, we will also have uh, more authenticated methods. Uh, sorry, this is on the API side. Um, the API improvements, you will see more endpoints. We you'll be able to trigger schedules which uh, uh, you, you, you've been able to do. Now you can actually find out the status of the schedules as well as the list of schedules and so forth. Uh, the account usage metrics, you can actually create an API. So this is very interesting because now you can actually use click data itself to retrieve your own metrics of, of the usage of click data. For example, which users viewed which dashboards uh, or which users logged in or logged out, et cetera, and times and dates and things like that. Uh, we've uh, updated the documentation and the playground so it's faster and more standard uh, and now we have three methods of authentication including basic authentication now we struggled because basic authentication is a very simple way to gain access to, a, to the api for your account simply by entering your username and the password we struggled because um it's 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 so simple that if you share your uh your username and password and you enable api on that user account uh, obviously, anybody can really use it, uh, and 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 potentially uh, it's considered a less uh, secure method. But it's so widely used in so many different applications today that uh, we eventually gave in and we we were offering it um, for those systems or for those uh, users that are building interfaces to click data that absolutely cannot use OAuth client credentials or OAuth user. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Obviously, mobile applications. They were released over the last two weeks uh, several times uh, as we encountered uh, feedback from, from several users. Um, so what did we add? Obviously, we talked about the white label. It's not white label uh, aware. Uh, it's got a better dashboard display. Uh, we can control the size of the dashboard, how it's displayed in, in auto mode. You will uh, try to fit the screen of the device, but you can switch it quickly to a fluid or stacked mode. Uh, we have single on for Active Directory. SAML will be coming uh, in the near future. Two-factor authentication to keep your accounts more secured. Again, as a reminder, what two-factor authentication is, is when you log into uh, your account in ClickData, uh, ClickData using uh, something like Google or Microsoft Authenticator will generate a new pin 
at that moment of login so that you need to push put put that uh, pin number uh, to be able to access your account and it's called two factor because the first one is obviously your name and user and the second factor it's something that you have which is your phone with you which uh, with using Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator will confirm that it is truly you trying to access the uh, click data and finally you can share and print dashboards directly from your iPhone as well okay um, checking in the questions again, uh, there's a question of, can we restrict access by IPs? Uh, yes, we can restrict access by IPs, actually. Um, I will actually uh, take you back to uh, the last seminar on, on clickdata.com uh, support and webinars, where the previous webinar we talked about, um, actually, I don't believe it was a previous one. It was... Uh, uh, the one before that, where we talked about um, uh, security, uh, uh, both password and device security. So you can watch that webinar, but I'll actually answer very quickly here how you can actually um, look at the uh, account settings again and uh, security. And here you will have uh, IP security uh, right on this spot, where if you enable, you can actually add um, your IP addresses for either your network uh, or a range of IP addresses. So yes, you can. And this is applicable, by the way, to all the live links, dashboards, as well as the application. So with that, I will uh, end my webinar uh, at 45, 47 minutes, in fact, right on the time give you the next uh, 15 minutes to finish your coffee uh, and tea. Anyway, um, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Again, my name is Telmo Silva. And if you do have any questions, please do reach out to, uh, to us. You can actually contact us on the support page. Uh, all our names are there. So you can just book some time with any of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, talk to you soon. And uh, happy dashboarding. Thank you very much.